my goodness, AMD, really, oh, this, I don't know how this gets much worse for them on their GPU side of things. Also, Stadia issues one last update and I want this laptop and I want it now. Please give it to me. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your bright host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. And today's top story is a sad little piece of news concerning the RX 7900 XTX GPUs and the XT as well. There's a lot of details coming out, including the fact that AMD has finally broken their silence about these cards and what exactly is going on. A lot of this is coming from Igor's lab, doing a lot of the digging and trying to get in contact with official AMD reps. And so in a statement that we're finding out, it turns out that an AMD system integrator is saying that as assumed, the cause is the evaporated chamber. Several batches are affected. Currently four to six batches and thousands of graphics cards are assumed only made by AMD graphics cards are affected. So this confirms a lot of the details that Der Bauer went into to go find out what exactly is causing the overheating on these AMD GPUs, which is then resulting in under clocking and the graphics cards performing worse than they actually should be. Overall, it does appear like it's a hardware defect. And one of the questions that we got a lot when we were doing our live streams of AMD CES keynote is, hey, Brett, will I be OK if I buy a Red Devil or if I plan on water cooling? It definitely seems like the graphics cards themselves are totally fine. It is the cooler itself that is actually broken and then a system integrator confirming that to Igor's lab. But then it did Additionally, Igor talking about how this is not only a problem for the hotspot temperature, but if the hotspot is reaching 110 degrees Celsius, that likely means the storage tank with the liquid is also reaching that temperature, which could cause further problems to the cooler. And the only option is going to be RMA. They will not be able to fix this. You have to replace the cooler. It's not something that the user can patch. It is not a driver update. This is a physical hardware recall that must happen by AMD and AMD has finally broken their silence and issued a statement about it saying we are working to determine the cause of the unexpected performance limitation of AMD Radeon RX 7900 XTX graphics cards. Based on our observations to date, we believe this issue is related to the thermal solution used in AMD reference design and is occurring in a limited number of card souls. We are working to resolve this issue for the affected cards. Customers experience the unexpected limitation should contact AMD support. So uh, again, a little bit of a nothing statement from AMD trying to downplay it. Limited number of cards. It's working to determine what's happening when we already have details from third party independent people coming out and saying, hey, we figured this out, AMD. It's your gosh dang coolers. You need to issue a hardware recall. So the fact that they're saying this right now after all of the details have actually come out from third parties does seem a little bit too little too late, but it gets even worse than that. So not only are thousands of cards affected. Not only is it a hardware fault that AMD has to recall, it also turns out that AMD can't do that. If they're gonna do a direct swap for you one for one, they don't have enough cards. So it turns out as people are actually trying to get a full replacement for their 7900 XTX, AMD issuing a response saying, we understand that you want a replacement for your 7900 XTX. It is important to know that at the moment, we are unable to replace your card as we do not have stock available in our warehouses. We can begin the process once stock is replenished, but at this time, we do not have an estimated date for restocking. If you prefer a refund instead, we can process this refund immediately and we will provide you with a return label so that you can return the card to our warehouse. So it appears AMD support only has the option of getting a refund. Your options are going to be vertically mount your GPU, hope it doesn't explode and actually go past 110 degrees Celsius in the actual chamber or potentially send it back to AMD for them to give you your full money back. But it does not appear like they have enough cards produced to actually even fix this problem. This could potentially be the fact that AMD does not have any proper procedure in place for how to fix this. So it could come down the pipeline in a little bit that AMD support will now start saying, hey, yes, send in your GPUs. We don't need to have the graphics cards. You just need the shrouds. That's all AMD has to replace is the cooler that goes on top. And likely, I would hope 
potentially those are a little bit easier to manufacture than all of the silicon that goes into the GPUs and there should be less lead time on that. So maybe they should start opening up a stockpile of heat sinks that they could put out for the support. And this could just be due to the fact that AMD has not issued an official fix for this yet. So it could potentially be resolved without them having to up their supplies of GPUs. But regardless, it is not looking good for AMD. They are not coming out and bracing this head on, getting in front of it, admitting to the customer that there's a fault and that they will work actively to take care of it for you. And instead, you have to do the digging. You have to watch these videos on hot news from Der Bauer, from all of the other people covering this for you to know what exactly the heck is going on. You have to contact Power Color in order for them to get to AMD to fix this. This is bad customer service. This is them actually not taking advantage of the good graces that people have given them and instead squandering it, which is not looking good for them on the GPU side of things. I personally am a little bit disappointed by AMD's response here, but it looks like a lot of people are disappointed in AMD's GPUs in general because this honestly it gets even worse. I haven't seen this ever happen for AMD GPUs as of right now, less than a month after launch, okay, December 12th or 13th is when these cards came out. It is January 5th when I'm filming this. Their cards are getting discounted. They are putting the 7900 XT on sale. I've never seen this. I thought it was ridiculous when they put the 7000 series CPUs on sale for Black Friday. I thought that was too soon. And it was a month. It was like two months later after the chips came out. Now, within a month, you can find the XT discounted. Now, admittedly, it is not much. But again, this is a situation I have not seen. You can pick up if you go to Best Buy right now, they have it in stock in $880 7900 XT. Still a little bit overpriced, but at the same time, it is also being discounted over in Europe. So it looks like GPU price dropping on made by AMD cards for the 7900 XT might be coming further down the pipeline because AMD just can't sell these. These things have been in stock since launch day. I have been tracking AMD's website every single day, and there has not been a single time I've gone on their website and I couldn't have picked up an XT. It looks like they have plenty of stock that they need to get get rid of and nobody is even buying it. So they're starting to reduce the price. This is this is a rough launch all around for AMD. Bad power draw, hot temperatures, broken coolers, and now they have to discount the sub GPU that they launch with the XTX. It's this is brutal. This is almost as brutal as them getting knocked down to 10% market share on the, the latest figures. This is whew, I don't think they're going to increase based on that. And you know what did increase, though? <laughs> Crypto stonks, Bitcoin up 0.3% to be a 16,854. Ethereum up 0.09% to be at 1253. And Dogecoin up roughly 1% to be at 7.2 cents. Tesla, on the other hand, not having as good of a day, down 2.65% to close at 110.63. Still, in general, being on a downward trend, which is what we want for our tech prices. I already talked to you about the 7900 XT deal, which I wouldn't necessarily recommend you pick up, but I'm going to recommend that you pick up whatever Reese says because he's bringing in the hottest tech deals. Hey, welcome back. TFT deals are bringing the hottest tech deals out on the internet. Good to have you guys here. We've got a couple of stellar deals today, starting off with the Orki True Wireless in-ear earbuds, which are currently going for $13.99, which is $76 or 84% off. And next up, we have the MSI MPG Z590 Gaming Force Motherboard with its Intel LGA 1200 socket going for only $119.99, which is $90 off or 42% off. And then lastly, we have the Asus VivoBook S14X laptop with its 14.5 inch 2.8K 120 Hertz OLED display, an Intel Core i7-12700H, 12 gigs of DDR4 RAM, and a 512 gig SSD. You can pick up honestly one heck of a laptop for only $699.99, which is $400 off. And with that, the deals are done, but don't forget you can find the links to everything and more down in the video description. Hope you guys have a fantastic weekend. Until next week, I'm gonna hand you off back to Brad for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. I love listening to Reese. He's just... His voice serenades my ears. Hey, welcome back to your videos. Bring the hottest tech deals on the internet. Sorry, I got lost in uh, in remembering Reese for a second, and hopefully we can 
get lost in video games a little bit more, especially for the community that needs accessibility options, because Microsoft has actually been at the forefront of offering accessibility options to gamers with their adaptive controllers. I love to see the initiative that they've taken there. Sony at CES, kind of going halfway here, announcing an adaptive controller for the PlayStation 5, which looks really cool. You can see that it can be customized. It has a whole bunch of options. You can connect different things. It can make it so that people who need special controls can develop them for the PlayStation and play their games in a way that's good for them. We've already seen this initiative come from different game developers like God of War Ragnarok, which implemented dozens of different accessibility options into their game to make sure that every gamer could play the game as much as possible and so seeing this on the hardware side is very good the only caveat that I would put here is that just seems like a paper announcement looking at the pictures it looks like a render if you watch the video that they put with people who would want the accessibility controller they're mostly just talking about Sony promising it and not that they've actually used it so it seems like Sony still needs to bring it out I will give them full kudos if they actually bring this to market. I appreciate them at least having the forethought to pursue it, but I would really want to see it come to market first. And a lot of people want to see Noctua bring their next gen 140 mil fans to market and you can't get them. It's not happening. Noctua saying that there's uh, unexpected delays that are going to be coming to their 140 mil fans. Significant delays were necessary because of their strict quality standards and rigorous verification processes in order to get the product out to market. So instead of launching sometime soon, they were supposed to show them off at CES. They're now saying that launch is going to be in Q4 2023, which will also affect the launch of the new D15 from Noctua as well, which is kind of sad because you'll have to wait a little while longer to get that. And you only have to wait a little while longer to say goodbye to Stadia because it's shutting down on January 18th, but not before it gets its final update on Android, which gives a warning of the fact that Stadia is shutting down. There's also been updates on some games like uh, this Destiny 2 page is gone and now says hey stadia will wind down january 18th rip a real one i think that's what the kids say these days and are the kids into the metaverse i don't know i'm too old for all of this crap but htc thinks that i am not that's a bad segue. I'm sorry, everybody. But they announced their new Vive XR Elite headset, which is supposed to compete with the MetaQuest Pro coming in at the $1,100 price segment. It's going to have 4K display, 90 hertz, 110 degree field of view, four wide field of view cameras for inside out tracking, as well as wireless cameras. It's supposed to get about two hours battery, life, 30 watts fast charging. It looks like this. It can also be connected to the PC via wireless or USB-C, and you can pre-order it right now if you want to check it out. I'm not necessarily super hyped for this, the teaser was that they were going to kind of compete with the MetaQuest. I was hoping it was going to be competing with the MetaQuest 2 on the more affordable side. Naive Brett being really stupid because honestly, the, the HTC has just thrown away every sense of like lead that they had in the VR market. The Vive was so good when it came out and then they just followed it up with nothing. And it's been just relegated to being the cool first VR headset. And now the MetaQuest 2 is kind of the more accessible one and they're still pursuing a different market segment that is at least uninteresting to me but what is very interesting to me what gets my heart palpitating faster than palpatine returning somehow is lenovo announcing their yoga laptops with dual screen oleds that you can position however you want you attach it to a keyboard and then you can flip it up like this so you got dual stacked monitors you could have side by side this is a fantastic implementation 13.3 inch 2.8k screens that could be put wherever you want only 0.63 inches thick weighs three pounds it's gonna have it's gonna have an i7 U15, 16 gigs of RAM, one terabyte storage, 80 watt hour battery life, Thunderbolt 4. It's gonna cost $2,100 to not even get that full spec, but I, I just want it. I don't know, I don't, I don't have a use for it. It just looks cool. I wanna be the guy at Starbucks with that thing. I don't even leave my house. Why am I, why am I pining after this? So gosh dang hard. And I've been pining after faster PCI Express storage, again, for no reason. Do I need PCI Express 4.0? Not really. Do I need 5.0? Not really. Do I want it? I'm gonna shove it in my PC so fast. And MSI has been doing that with their laptops, showing off at CES that their Titan laptops are actually gonna be one of the first laptop ranges with PCI Express 5.0 SSD, showing a laptop series with their Spadium drives, which can reach up to 12 gigabytes per second read and about nine gigabytes 
per second write, so not the fastest that we could expect PCI Express 5.0 to go up to, because that's gonna be closer to the 14 gigabyte per second region, but this is gonna be faster than anything that's currently available for desktop or laptop, which is fairly exciting. CES has had some really exciting stuff. I have been watching it from afar, and I'm kind of glad personally that I'm, I'm not there. I've actually been enjoying doing it from home. I miss personally covering CES from South Africa when Reese and I would just head out to a little nature park that was by our office and we would film videos with Wildebeest and Zebra and every so often an ostrich. It was a lot of fun. I miss the South African remote CES coverage. Comment down below if you remember that too. And uh, I'm gonna go be sad now. See you guys in the next episode of Hot News on Monday.